Everything that you're capable of doing is made possible by your brain. For every single option you can think of for how you're going to act, your ability to carry out each course of action, and ultimately every opportunity available to you, the ability of your brain is the limiting factor. Having a better brain would mean more capability and more possibilities in every area of life. So when we watch a movie like Limitless, where the main character has his life completely transformed by extra brain power, we start to imagine what we'd do in that situation. That personal fantasy just ends up being all the things we already want to do but find really difficult. Stuff like effortlessly navigating social situations and impressing people with all the interesting things we know. Coming up with brilliant business ideas and then using them to make a ton of money. Rapidly mastering every skill we're interested in and making brilliant creative works like the ones that inspire us. There's a ton of opportunities we'd all jump on immediately if only our brains were great enough that we always knew what to do and how to do it. So naturally, the idea that you can improve your brain is a really captivating one, and this video will explain the practical steps that we can all take to do it. For a long time, people didn't believe it was possible to improve your brain at all. The accepted wisdom was that you just had a fixed level of intelligence and that was that. But over the last few decades, it's gradually been discovered that there's more to it than that. Studies have shown things like musicians gaining more brain matter in the parts of the brain involved in audio processing, and that taxi drivers end up with a larger hippocampus, a part of the brain involved in memory, when compared to bus drivers. Because they need to memorize a mental map of an entire city and all the best routes and shortcuts through it, whereas bus drivers only need to remember a few set routes. This proves that the activities we do on a regular basis will cause physical changes in our brains and improve their abilities. The way the brain adapts itself to different types of stimuli is called neuroplasticity, and there's three steps you need to follow to get the best results in using it to improve your own brain power. The first is creating what's called an enriched environment for your brain. What this actually means is setting up the right conditions so that your brain will get the most out of the stimulating activities you choose to do. The first part of this is doing the things that make your brain as healthy as possible. And since your brain is a part of your body, it's mostly the same things you do to keep your body as healthy as possible. Everyone already knows that physical exercise is good for your health, but it's especially good for your brain health because it promotes the release of something called brain-derived neurotropic factor. This is a chemical that promotes the creation of new brain cells. Even light exercise will do this. A study of 120 older adults found that 45 minutes of walking three times a week increased the volume of their hippocampus by 2%. And as I mentioned earlier with the bus drivers, the hippocampus is really important for memory. It's essentially a relay station that determines which of your short-term memories get encoded into long-term mental changes. The fact that it has this particular function means it's a really good thing that the hippocampus can be changed so easily by the way we use our bodies and minds, because it puts us in control of our own ability to learn. A few other important health-related things to consider are staying well hydrated and getting plenty of sleep, since this is when our brain heals and reconfigures itself. As well as targeting your brain health through your body, you can also go for it in a more direct way. Meditation is the closest thing there is to a workout specifically for the brain. A 2015 study showed that meditation actually increases the size of several important areas of the brain. As well as the good old hippocampus, it also increases the size of the posterior cingulate cortex, which impacts our ability to focus, and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is involved in willpower. Getting started with meditation isn't complicated at all. Just set a timer for five minutes and then sit comfortably with your eyes closed, focusing on the feeling of your own breathing and letting any other thoughts drift away each time they arise. That's all you need to do to get started and it's incredibly simple considering how much we get out of it. The second part of creating an enriched environment is creating a physical place that keeps you in the right mental state to stimulate your brain and learn new things. This could mean having relaxing music playing, having a rotating series of interesting pictures on a TV screen, or even just keeping the room clutter free. Once the setup is done, the second step is to start stimulating your brain 
by doing an activity that requires the type of brain function you want to improve. Something to remember is that the reason you want to improve your brain is just as important as how you go about it. If you're pursuing an activity that doesn't have any relevance to you or your life, it's just not going to work. Something like learning a new language that you never plan to speak or use in any practical way wouldn't achieve the same results as learning a skill that's useful to your career or to a hobby that you do every day, because the brain only likes to remember the things it needs to remember. So when choosing a stimulating activity, pick something that you can use as a tool to benefit the rest of your life as well as improving your brain. This could be things like learning about body language to improve your social life, investing to improve your finances, or philosophy to improve your own thoughts. Once you've chosen something, you want to make sure the challenge level is right in the Goldilocks zone. Difficult, but still possible. Something that's way too easy won't make any kind of impact on your brain. And a good rule of thumb is that if you're not failing some of the time, then you're not improving. Overcoming difficult mental challenges provides the kind of experience that forces your brain to make new connections. Just as it takes a repeated physical stimulus to make your body become stronger, it takes a repeated mental stimulus to make your brain adapt by improving itself. Doing something once won't change your brain much, but the more you repeat different activities, the more your new neural pathways will become ingrained. And once you start experiencing the results of this, the more determined and motivated you'll be to continue. Because having a better brain will mean more options are available to you in life. You'll be able to think of more possible courses of action. And then when you choose one, you'll be better at carrying it out as well. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, then subscribe because there'll be more like it coming in the future. And also click like because if you do, then good things will happen and YouTube will make sure more people see this video and it'll hopefully help them out too. Have a great day.